The Shark Attacks of 1916, an unbelievable true story. It says, imagine reading an article about a rabbit that suddenly turned into a bloodthirsty killer. You would laugh, maybe, or shake your head in disbelief. That's how most Americans in 1916 felt when they first heard about the shark attacks along the New Jersey shore. A shark attacking a human? Impossible. Sharks are tame creatures, most people believe, easily scared with jaws too weak to do real damage to a human. There were no real marine biologists in those days, no scuba gear or submarines for underwater exploration. There had never been close studies of sharks, just stories passed down over generations. And of course, everyone knew about Herman Ulrichs and his, fam and his famous reward. In 1891, the tycoon had offered $500 to anyone who could prove that a person had ever been attacked by a shark along the east coast of the United States, north of North Carolina. Decades went by, and nobody collected the reward. This seemed to confirm the popular belief that sharks posed no danger to humans. And then came the attacks of 1916. Though the characters in my book are made up, the major events of the story are true. Over 12 days during the scorching hot July of 1916, four people were killed in shark attacks. First, Charles Van Sant and then Charles Bruder were fatally wounded swimming in the ocean. Then, 16 miles from the ocean, 11-year-old Lester Stilwell was killed while swimming in the creek with his, while, while swimming with his buddies in the Matawan Creek. 24-year-old Stanley Fisher was attacked trying to rescue Lester. 12-year-old Joseph Dunn was bitten on the leg but survived, just like Chet. These attacks shocked America and shattered false ideas about sharks. There was no doubt that these were shark attacks. Two days after the Matawan attacks, a great white shark was caught in the Raritan Bay. It had human bones in its stomach, which seemed to prove that the killer had been caught. But over the past few decades, scientists and investigators have raised questions about the attacks. Many doubt that a lone great white was responsible. They say a bull shark is more likely to have attacked in the Matawan Creek, since that is the only man-eating species that can easily survive in fresh water for a length of time. In the weeks before the first attacks, ship captains had reported seeing more sharks than usual in the Atlantic shipping lanes, including great whites and bull sharks. Perhaps some unusual ocean or weather conditions had attracted sharks to the shore areas where they tragically crossed paths with swimmers. We will never know for sure. What we do know is the shark attacks are ex is that shark attacks are extremely rare and that the attacks of 1916 will never be forgotten.